Today, we are at the Rockland Water Treatment Plant. We will show you how we take water from the river and treat it so it's safe for consumption. Let's go. It all begins here with water from the Ottawa River, which flows into the treatment plant through a large underwater pipe. A coarse screen keeps the fish and large debris out while letting the water in. Just ahead of the low lift pumps is an even finer screen to remove any smaller objects and fish that may have made it through the first screen. Raw water flow meters monitors and records how much water is being used each day. Chemical coagulants and actisan are added to finer particles to help them stick together, plus increasing their size and weight. That way, they are more likely to settle or get caught in the filters. Thanks to the mixing, the coagulant is thoroughly distributed. With the coagulant added, the flow splits into two water treatment trains. There are two trains with multiple chambers for flocculation, clarification and filtration. The flocculation zone is where, with the help of slow mixing, small particles collide and stick together forming larger, heavier particles, or as we call it, flock. The next chamber is called a clarifier where the flock sinks. In this area, there are tube settlers that encourage flock to settle. So what happens after the flock settles? Well, each treatment train has valves that are set to open on timed intervals. And when they do, anything settled at the bottom goes to a sludge handling unit for further treatment. After the flocculation and clarification process, the water flows into gravity filters containing hard coal called anthracite and sand. This filtration process removes materials that can make your water look, taste, and smell bad. The filter also removes harmful pathogens. Online continuous analyzers examine the water for clarity. Filters have a dirty job and must be clean and clear. Each treatment train contains a storage tank system that automatically initiates filter backwashes. By reversing the flow through the filters, this removes any and all captured particles and pathogens. However, filtering on its own is not enough. To meet regulatory requirements, a disinfection process is also necessary. Sodium hypochlorite, or liquid chlorine, is added once the water is filtered to eliminate pathogens. There is also an added UV disinfection unit to inactivate pathogens. At this point, the flow travels to the high lift pump clear well. Here, an online continuous analyzer examines the treated water for chlorine levels to make sure it meets regulatory requirements. The treated water is then pumped into the distribution system by vertical turbine high lift pumps. The flow rate and daily total water pumped is monitored and recorded by a flow metering device. Secondary disinfection treatment takes place right before the flow enters the distribution system. Liquid ammonium sulfate is added to the chlorinated water to help form a long-lasting disinfectant. This helps keep the water safe for consumption for an extended period of time as it makes its way to your home. In many areas, the distribution system is many kilometers long. If you could look underground, you would see a network of pipes that takes water to your residences and businesses throughout your community. In your municipality, look up, you'll find water towers. It has many uses, including water storage 
and ensuring proper water pressure in the distribution system. And that's the journey your water has taken right from the source to your tap. Join us in raising a glass to clean, safe tap water. Bottoms up. <laughs>